how many times have you heard about a great person where somebody felt sorry for them and then after that they became hugely successful, they achieved greatness or they started a big empire or a company? Never happens. Nobody felt sorry for Gandhi, nobody felt sorry for Mandela, nobody felt sorry for Martin Luther King, nobody felt sorry for Malcolm X. Because when we feel sorry for people, a lot of the times we don't realize it's actually not helping the other person. So I get labeled as cold because I don't show sympathy for people who have learnt victimhood. And the only time I feel bad for somebody is when they have a critical illness which cannot be cured or there is a genuine threat to their life or their civil liberties somehow because they live in a country where they really don't have rights. They may be living under a dictatorship rule or something like that. Other than that, the reason I won't feel sorry for a human being is because number one, I know the power that human beings have. Spiritually, we're very powerful and no spiritual human being ever feels sorry for themselves or others because it's almost like a disrespect to the human spirit. If you actually look at spirituality, right? If you look at spirituality, you will find that the word fear is not synonymous with spirituality. You can't be living in fear and be spiritual at the same time because spirituality is actually synonymous with the word faith. And faith is the opposite of fear. How can you have faith and fear at the same time? So people who have so much fear that they feel sorry for themselves, why would you feel sorry for yourself? It's because you're starting to entertain the idea that you can't overcome the problem or the challenge or the adversity you're going through. Why would you feel sorry for somebody else? It's because you're starting to project your insecurities on them. Yet in our society, what we do is we end up seeing those people who feel sorry for others as good and noble. And people like me who don't entertain victimhood are seen to be cold when it's actually quite the opposite. The reason I don't allow people to feel like a victim is because I want them to understand how powerful they are. It actually annoys me and hurts me to see how people have embraced this concept of acquired helplessness. They actually feel helpless about everything. And it's actually even worse for the real victims. If you're a real victim and you are actually a, a person who has no options because there is no solution for your life. Maybe you're going through such a critical illness or maybe there, is, there are genuine threats to your life. What happens is because there are so many normal people acting like victims, it actually takes attention away from the real victims. You have to spot the language of victimhood. People who think they're victims are always, you know, they always think that they're the only ones it's happening to. They're the ones that will blame circumstances. They never take responsibility. They always have something else or someone else to blame. There's always something else or someone else that is responsible for where I'm at. Oh, you don't know what happened to me, Ron. Oh, yes, I do. Because all of the stuff that's happened to you doesn't just happen to you. Bad things happen to everybody and bad things happen to good people as well. Who hasn't experienced the death of a loved one at some point? Who hasn't had a health scare at some point? Who hasn't failed in life at some point or hasn't been betrayed at, at some point or has had financial loss at some point? Everybody has faced those things, but not everybody is defeated by those things. And that is the difference between victors and victims. I just think that a lot of people who are victims, who choose to be victims, are not real victims. They're actually volunteers who have decided to become victims. You know, as there's a saying that, you know, when adversity strikes, some people break and other people break records. And I decided that one day I wanted to be the person who would take every single adversity and challenge and betrayal and loss and use it as a stepping stone towards success. But these days, the mediocrity culture has infiltrated our society to the extent where the middle class who have never had it so good in their life are constantly playing victim. They never have the time. They always feel like their problems are genuine and no wonder they're failing. No wonder they're miserable. They are not living into the power of the human spirit. They're not going after the things that they want. They genuinely believe everybody's out to get them. That kind of mentality can never succeed because victims do not become victors. This is why I have been on this path of empowering people. I actually genuinely empower people. There are people who claim that they're empowering people, but they're actually disempowering people. They will tell people that they're empowering them, 
but yet the whole time they keep feeling sorry for them and keep sympathizing with them. Like who has ever achieved greatness after being sympathized with? Think about any Olympic athlete, think about any person who has been a world leader or a political leader. Nobody feels bad for them, right? And they don't need people to feel bad for them. They don't need people to feel sorry for them. This is the thing. The people who actually need it, and I can tell you, some people love being victims. Why? Because it's the only time they get attention. So rather than earning attention, what they do is they make themselves helpless. And in a mediocrity-based culture, uh, you know, when people empathize with you, it's seen as kindness. But what a lot of people don't realize is when you empathize with somebody, when they're playing a victim, you're actually destroying their spirit. You are not lifting them. And the only reason we do it is because it makes us feel good. So if you're playing victim, instead of me saying, hey, get over it. Bad stuff happens to everybody. Come on, get up, take responsibility, fix it. If I act like, oh no, it's okay, you know, it's so bad that it's happened to you. Yes, that person is a jerk, the, your boss is a jerk, your boyfriend is a jerk, whatever I say, you know why I'm saying it? Not because I care about you, because I'm trying to be likable to you, right? It's actually very selfish when I, I facilitate the victimhood in you instead of breaking the pattern of victimhood because it's keeping you stuck. People don't understand that though. We are in the midst of one of the biggest victimhood crisis ever. I mean, here are young children in Asia and poor countries of Asia and Africa that are working and sometimes even supporting their families. And you have grown men, healthy, no problems with them, young, unemployed and feeling sorry for themselves and oh, I've got depression, oh, I've got anxiety. And I'm not undermining any of those things, right? Because again, they have bought into the notion that there is nothing I can do about my anxiety and depression, that it's a, it's a severe chemical imbalance, which has nothing to do with my inability to direct my thoughts and emotions. Everybody now is blaming something else or someone else. And that's classic victimhood right there. And I remember the days when I was going through anxiety and I was very depressed in my, you know, in my twenties. And so many people tried to tell me that it could be a, a chemical imbalance or why don't you take some medication and drugs and all of this sort of stuff that people do. They're trying to help and their intent is good. But ultimately I realized that the reason I was anxious was because I was living too much in the future. And when I was depressed, I was living too much in the past. And I realized it was my own inability to manage my own thoughts and emotions. That the problem can't be externally fixed just by taking some pills or by acting like a victim. And yes, it'll go, it's going to get me a lot of short-term sympathy. You know, that's why they say misery loves company. If you act miserable, you're going to get a lot more attention. You're going to get a lot more people liking you. You're going to get a lot more people feeling sorry for you. And it gets that attention, but it destroys you. And that's why I'm constantly telling people, don't play victim. Unless you are a genuine victim and you really have no options for yourself. But even that I will argue in many cases, when people don't see options and possibilities for themselves, even that I would argue in many cases, it's more a consequence of the fact that their perception zone is limited. And that's because they have not been developing their mindset. I always say I'm no victim. No matter what happens to me, if you cheat on me, I'm responsible. I was maybe uh, not affectionate towards the person, maybe I was not hygienic, maybe I was not attractive, maybe I didn't communicate well. Um, if you steal from me as an employee, I'm responsible. Maybe I didn't take the time to understand your needs. Maybe I didn't put procedures, systems and controls in place to prevent that from happening. If you break into my house and you steal from me, I'm responsible. Maybe I didn't have padlocks, maybe I didn't have deadlocks, maybe I didn't have an alarm system. If I get injured, and I can't work and I have to sell off everything. I'm responsible. Maybe I was underinsured. Maybe I didn't have risk mitigation strategies in place. We have to understand that self-responsibility doesn't mean blame. Blaming is negative, but self-responsibility is very positive. And unfortunately, it's actually the victims that engage in blame. People who are self-responsible don't engage in blame. They just say, I'm responsible, even though they did it. Is there something that I could have done to minimize the incidence of that happening? That mindset is empowering because you realize it's the only way you can be in control of what's happening. The moment you go, he, she, them, that thing, this thing is responsible for my misery. That thing is responsible for my problems. Well, guess what? 
you have just given up your power you've transferred it onto something else or someone else and therefore from that point on you're disempowered and disempowered people never ever become successful they never achieve they never cause any change because if you can't even change your own mind how are you going to change your own life and if you can't change your own life you have no hope of being able to change the lives of others i tell people all the time if you have bought into this victimhood this concept get rid of it fast it's like a virus it's going to kill you it's going to kill your potential it's going to kill your capability realize that you are very very powerful understand what it means don't claim to be a spiritual being if you're constantly blaming something else or somebody else or you're playing victim spiritual people don't do that okay really spiritual people understand the power the spiritual power that they have so this is it's so wrong people are so misinformed and it's costing them it's costing them opportunities it's costing them fulfillment it's costing them their own potential and that's my message to people and that's why i'm very very passionate about it i don't accept victimhood I don't sit there, I don't accept complaints, I don't accept the drama. And you know this, I mean, you work with me, you, know, you always say, I don't take drama because a lot of people thrive on drama, okay? They don't have enough challenges in their life, so they artificially produce challenges in their life so that they have something to be dramatic about, something to be miserable about. And after a while, it becomes a habit. And, and then once it becomes a habit, not only are you miserable, but you, even if you attract people you only end up attracting miserable people you're not going to attract winners winners don't want to be around people who are constantly feeling sorry for themselves because winners don't have time to do that winners have a vision they have a mission they have a task to do and this is what i'm constantly labeled for and attacked for which is absolute nonsense and this is what politicians do as well see what politicians do right they actually make you feel like you're helpless oh we're going to help you the government's going to look after you and do they ever they never ever do, but you know why they do it? Because it gets them votes. Because people love to know that they're real victims and somebody's gonna help them. But the person who comes out and says, no, you're not a victim, you're powerful, you can fix this, you can correct this, you can change this. That person never gets elected because they're transferring the responsibility back on the individual and people don't want that anymore. And this is how we're now in a world where 80% or so people are disengaged at work. Majority of people are not high performers. Majority of people are not productive. Majority of people never get to a life and lifestyle that they want. Majority of people never get to financial security. Majority of people are unfulfilled. Majority of people have some sort of mental issues with, with either they have depression or they have anxiousness or they have anger. This is what happens when we buy into this type of culture and we've got to start saying no to it and we've got to stop saying I'm a victim and we've got to start saying I'm a victor. I can change this.